Good evening, church. So we've been doing a lot of talking lately and probably forever living out here in Fort Hill County about finding God in nature. I love looking for God in nature. And, um, and you know, we can find messages from nature. It sort of depends on how we receive it and how we observe it. Well, for the past several days, there's been this cardinal, this beautiful cardinal, especially in the morning with the sun, the morning sun on it. There's been this cardinal who's been tapping on our window, tapping on the bedroom window and then on the dining room window below it. And, you know, it's been going on for three days. And I think uh, at first I was a little annoyed and then I thought, wait a minute, maybe this cardinal wants to be my friend. I could open the window and he'd stop, car, he would stop tapping and he could come on in. And I said, no, no, no. If he, once a bird gets in here, you know, what, what happens then? And then I realized he don't want to be my friend. He sees his image in that window and is trying to get rid of that, of that, uh, that vision of somebody that's interloping into his territory. So he's, he's doing what he's supposed to do, getting rid of all the enemies and stuff. But... Um, it wasn't a message from God that this nature of thing wanted to be my friend. Probably, even though we do have messages from creation about our relationship with God, we certainly turn to scripture and worship and relationships first. And that's what tonight is all about. It's amazing how these three scripture readings are tied together. And they're all about how do we recognize God more quickly, more permanently. In that Exodus passage, the key quotes are these. After having described, after having described what God is calling the people of Israel to do, namely to get ready to kill a lamb, a goat or sheep, um, cook it, roast it, um, put some of the blood on the lintel, the doorway. Um, the angel of death will pass over. Um, God gave those directions to those people of Israel who were in captivity in, in Egypt in a way to prepare them to be led into freedom. And this was the first step. And, of course, the Passover is the key theme because this became the Passover, the ritual, the worship of the Jews. And the, and the quotes are this. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is a Passover of the Lord. The message is, don't sit in down and enjoy this meal. Eat it, be strengthened, and get ready to go. And the other quote is this. I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. And it was, and it has been, and it is the most important celebration of the Jewish people, that of Passover. So three things are cooking there. One is God is saying to the people, get ready. And he gave, God gave specific instructions as the scripture tells us. But God is also saying, don't hang around. I'm asking you to do and to follow Moses, well, to follow God's lead into the wilderness and into freedom. And finally he says, don't forget this event. Remember it. Bring it up in your imagination. Honor it on a yearly basis. Let it touch your heart and your mind and your soul again and again and again. And that's what has happened. That experience, that story in Exodus leads right into what Paul says in 1 Corinthians, which and, and in which he pulls quotes from, from the Gospel according to Luke and Matthew and Mark um, about this Passover thing, which becomes for us something more than Passover. 
But there's a connection. And the two quotes, so the, the quote is this. This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance. There's that word again. As people of faith, we are called to remember those important acts of God in the past because in the remembering, we sort of get into them and they become a part of our core belief. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And I'm sure you remember that at almost every Eucharist, these words are said, Christ our Passover, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Therefore, let us keep the feast. See the connection? It's all about remembering what God has done and what Jesus is doing right now in this story. And it is all about something being very important for us to, to experience and to let it sink into our being and become, become a primary part of our perspective of life. So what was that now? Get ready to be set free. Sit down and have a meal in order to remember Jesus. And the interesting thing here is that what the, the gospel that we hear today is from John. You might have noticed he doesn't, he doesn't say this. And, and, and by the way, this is sort of an interesting fact is that in the other three gospels, um, it was the Passover meal. In John, it's the day before the Passover meal. But they're still connected, and all four gospels are very important. But in John's gospel, John talks about two other things two other acts of Jesus that are really important and fits right into this theme. So John talks about foot washing. After the meal, the meal has been concluded, which we get from the other Gospels. And then he talks about, or he does, the foot washing. And the quotes are here. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, and you remember the description. He goes around, has a towel around his waist, washes every disciple's feet, um, white, cleans it up, dries it up. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Again, Jesus is doing something <clears throat> and asking us to do the same thing. And, and that's an important experience we need to have. You may have had it earlier here at St. James or at some other church, or you may not have had it. So let's talk about that. The wonderful thing about faith is that um, through our imagination, and this is really a way to pray, through our imagination, we can in fact place ourselves in the presence of Jesus. And imagine Jesus being with us. Even imagine Jesus washing our feet. And that's what I invite you to do tonight. When you get home at some time, sometime before you go to bed, find a quiet place, sit in a chair, close your eyes, or maybe before you close your eyes, read the washing of the feet section out of this bulletin. Close your eyes and imagine Jesus walking over and kneeling down in front of you. Oh, take off your socks and shoes. <laughs> take off your socks and shoes before you tar start this imaginary, imaginary prayer, this prayer of imagination. Imagine Jesus walking over and kneeling down in front of you. There's a pitcher of a water and a big bowl. And he pour, pours water into that bowl. He takes one of your feet and puts it in the water and pours water over it and dries it off very gently. Takes your foot out and puts it on the floor. Then he takes your other foot and, and pours water over that. 
and gently dries that foot and puts it on the floor. And then Jesus looks at you and says, I love you. I invite you to do that tonight. It's important. This washing of the feet has something to do with servant <coughs> ministry. It has something to do with allowing ourselves to be vulnerable in the presence of God, our Savior. It has something to do with receiving something from God much greater than we can give. And at the same time, Jesus is asking us, just as he asked the disciples who received this ministry of servanthood, to do that with each other and do that with others. It's a way in scripture of lifting up that principle of being intimate in the name of Jesus and especially reaching out to people in need who look for, who look for other people to honor them and to serve them. And finally in John, he gives this other quote, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. So he doesn't just say, I, he doesn't just say love one another. He says, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Again, you see, you see the pattern? Jesus lived his life, the Son of God, fully human, fully divine, in a way of making his life a principle, a pattern for our lives. If only we choose, if only we choose to prepare ourselves to recognize it, are willing to move in that direction and not just remain static, and trust that wherever God through Jesus Christ live, leads us is where we need to be. It's a fascinating message, these three scriptures together. Let it sink into your souls and let it live in your lives. Amen.